Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at describing transformations. Let's look at this example. So we're trying to describe fully the single transformation which maps shape A onto shape B. Okay, so you should see that this is a translation because you're moving the shape from one place to another. The shape isn't changing its angle, it's not changing its size, it's not being reflected, it's just changing where it's positioned. And so that's called a translation. But how is it being translated? Well, we compare two matching corners like this and count how far they go across and how far they go down. To go from shape A to shape B, you go six across and minus three down. And that is the uh, vector six minus three. So it's translation by vector six minus three. We get one mark for saying translation, one mark for saying six, and one mark for saying minus three as a vector. And that's for three marks in an exam. Now next one, describe how we get to C, uh, how to get from C to D. You should see this is a reflection, it is being flipped. So this is a reflection in the line Y is equal to two. Because Y equals two is the line halfway between those two shapes. When you're in the exam, you would probably want to draw that line first and then afterwards figure out what the equation of that line is. And so we say reflection in the line y equals 2 for two marks. One for saying reflection, one for saying y equals 2. Another reflection here, you should see that these two shapes are being reflected. And we're looking for the line that's halfway between them. And you should see it's this line here. That is the diagonal line that's halfway between those two shapes. And that, the equation of a line, is the line y is equal to x. If it's reflecting diagonally quite often, it is just the line y equals x. Uh, so if you're in doubt in the exam, just assume it's y equals 2x. Although it could be another diagonal line. And we write reflection in the line y equals x like that. We've done. One mark for same reflection, one mark for giving the equation of the straight line. And for two marks. Describe fully the single transformation which goes from H to G. And you should see this is a rotation. When we're doing rotations, make sure you use tracing paper so that can help you figure out how it's rotated. Okay, so we take tracing paper like this and we put it over the top of our graph. We mark on the four corners of the original uh, rectangle. I'm going to rotate that triangle using the tracing paper. We use our pencil as a pivot, so we press our pencil tip on uh, a point we want to pivot around. We're going to start on 0, 0. It's always a good idea to start on 0, 0. The origin, because quite often it is uh, the simple solution. So we try rotating it around there, and it doesn't work. Uh, and we get to here. Uh, so let's try again, and we go back, and now we're going to rotate against 1, 1. And we rotate it there, and we're much closer. Okay, so we've definitely got closer to uh, where it's rotating around. But it's not quite there yet, it's not quite overlapping with G. I'm going to try one, uh, a few more times, and we're here, let's try this point. Rotate around that point, using our pencil as a pivot, and all the corners perfectly line up with our rectangle. That means that is the centre of rotation. So what we've been doing is trial and improvement. So each time trying a different centre of rotation, and if we're getting closer, uh, we uh, use that line to encourage us to go closer and closer. If we're getting further away, it's time to go backwards. And so we're using trial and improvement to find the centre of rotation. So hooray, we found the centre that works, and this is the coordinate 1 across 2 up. So it's rotation around the centre, 1, 2, and we did rotate the paper 90 degrees, clockwise. So we do say clockwise by 90 degrees. We get one mark for saying rotation, one mark for giving the coordinate of the centre, and one mark by saying clockwise by 90 degrees. You do have to say clockwise or anti-clockwise when you're doing this. Some rotations will be anti-clockwise, so it's important you say that. Okay, now we're going to do this, going from I to J, uh, and this you should see is an enlargement. 
But to find the center of enlargement, we're going to connect up the matching corners of the two shapes. So I've drawn with a ruler uh, through the corners of all the, uh, the two matching triangles. And you should see they overlap. Uh, all three red lines overlap at the point zero, zero. That means the center of enlargement is zero, zero, or the origin. Okay, so uh, we know it's enlarged around center zero, zero, but now we need to know the scale factor. So how much bigger is the second shape than the smaller shape? Well, the first shape is four tall, and the second shape is six tall. So how much bigger is that? Let's do six divided by four, and that gives us 1.5. The scale factor is 1.5. So we put in the scale factor is 1.5. We get one mark for saying the enlargement, one mark for saying the center, and one mark for giving the exact scale factor for three whole marks. Okay, that was a lot of information taken, uh, so you may want to rewind the video and watch that one more time. But if you're ready, there's some practice questions for you to try here. So pause the video now and try to describe exactly uh, the transformations that go from one shape to another, from the red to the four other shapes. You will have to pause the video and this will probably take you about five to 10 minutes to complete. It is a bit tricky. Uh, you might find it easier if you uh, take a screenshot and print this out, uh, but it is possible to do on computer. Okay, if you've got an answer, I'll reveal the answers in three, two, one. Did you get it correct? Let me know how well you did in the comments. Thanks for watching this week's video from Advanced Maths. We have plenty more videos coming every week. So remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. You can also find us online at advancedmaths.com. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.